Hey guys, what's up? Rachel Varga here. I'm a registered nurse and an advanced aesthetic nurse since 2011, having helped thousands of clients all over the world look better and age backwards. It's pretty sweet. In this video, I'm going to give you a celebrity overview of Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman has gone through a number of different transformations in her celebrity career. There were a number of times where she looked really puffy and her face couldn't move and I'm going to tell you why that happens. When people's faces can't move and they're talking like this and they look like, like there's no life, right? That is when they've had too much what's called neuromodulator. Neuromodulators go by different brand names like Botox, Xeomin, and Dysport. And when people can't move their face, it's because they've had too much. However, I'm always treated and I have been since I was about 24 and I'm actually 33 in like three weeks. And it really comes down to just doing a little bit at a time. And it's kind of considered what's called baby Botox. So a little bit all over does actually give you the best overall effect in my experience. But when it's done, you know, too much, there's too much Botox, Xeomin or Dysport you can't move your face and it actually I find like hinders women's beauty when they go and interact with people because people can't they have no idea what they're trying to convey if they're happy are they sad are they excited are they scared are they terrified are they alive all of these treatments are always needed to be done with a blend of half art and half science so when you've seen Nicole Kidman and she can't move her face that's not filler that's neuromodulator Okay, we're gonna talk about filler. When you've seen her and her cheeks are really big, her lips are really plump, and she looks kind of puffy, that's when she's been a little bit over-treated with dermal fillers. Dermal fillers are hyaluronic acid. There's other types of fillers as well that actually even stimulate your body's own ability to make collagen. But the hyaluronic acid fillers are the most commonly used fillers out there. Some of the brand names you probably have heard of are Juvederm, Restylane, Bellatero, TOCL. There's lots of other ones, but really I recommend sticking with the big names that have lots of research behind them. You know, over a million treatments worldwide kind of thing. I have what's called a bit of a seven year rule. So if a product hasn't been around that long, I actually won't even use it on clients. And it's just a safety thing. I'm all about promoting public safety. So never go with kind of like the newest, latest, this brand new thing. Because I have to tell you, uh, Bell Kyra, you've probably heard about that for getting rid of double chin. It's actually not the best method out there to get rid of double chin. What's best is to actually do the neuromodulators to tweak your muscles. You can watch one of my videos on Botox, and Dysport to actually shrink the jowls and then use dermal fillers to actually reform a, a jaw that's actually uh, recessed back a little bit because that's what happens when we age actually. Things kind of recess back and then we lose the support in our jaw and then the neck skin hangs. So actually the way to improve floppy you know, skin or double chin or excess neck skin is a combination approach. It's never just a one hit wonder. Getting back to dermal fillers, they need to be done appropriately. I've been getting fillers for well over almost 10 years now, but just a little bit at a time. So when you're young, only getting a little bit to kind of mitigate the aging as it's happened. When you're 60 plus, you really do need a little bit more of an overhaul. We need to really get back that foundation into the skin to really support the tissue. So it's not all about just getting a skin tightening laser or things like that. It's actually about supporting the skin from underneath. Long story short, Nicole Kidman, there's been times where she's been a little bit kind of flat and hasn't really been able to express her smile properly. And there have been other times where her face just looks really puffy. In Nicole Kidman's latest show, Big Little Lies, in the first season, I actually thought she was looking pretty good. She probably could tone down on the neuromodulators a little bit so she has a bit more expression. Pretty much all of the cast in that show have no lines between their brows, so it's a pretty darn good indicator they're all getting the tox, which is the word for neuromodulators, kind of like the slang. And in the second season, I noticed that she, um, her jaw was looking really nice and sharp and well-formed. And so what I think what happened between the first and second season was she had filler to her marionette zone here. I actually did a couple weeks ago myself too. But when you get fillers done, it's a good idea to do the cheeks, the jawline, and the lips at the same time so that things are proportionally enhanced. One thing I see all the time is when people come to see me and they're like, oh, I really want my lips done. 
but if their jaw is recessed back and we go and make the lips bigger, everything's just gonna be really out of proportion. It looks really terrible. And that's how you get that duck lip. So by doing a little bit all over, it helps to enhance the facial features kind of more uniformly and in proportion. So that's what I think she did differently between season one and two was she kept up with her neuromodulators and had a little bit of dermal filler to her jawline because she looked a little uh, bigger and fuller here compared to her cheeks. So she didn't, I don't think had both areas done together. Little pro tip from me to, you know, do a little bit all over to get the best overall effect. You don't need to do a lot. You just need to do a little bit, but it really comes down to the expertise of your injector. And I teach other doctors and, and nurses how to do these treatments. It's really fun but it's very much half art, half science. So always look at your potential provider if you're considering having these treatments. If they look crazy, you'll probably start to look a bit crazy too. I hope you loved this episode. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Keep the conversation going at rachelvarga.ca. We have a sweet blog. I'm on podcast as well. Follow me on social at rachelvargaofficial. Subscribe to this channel. I can't wait to hear from you. Let me know if you have any other celebrity plastic surgery requests. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, see you in the next episode. Bye.